behavior. Now, I've been talking about a lot about these hyperactive, impulsive kids, these hypervigilant kids who are ready to overreact. Rapid, unexpected mood shifts. I've been at birthday parties with students where they're smiling and happy one minute. I turn around to cut a slice of cake to, br to give them. I turn around and they're reaching over the table. They've got a friend by the scruff of the neck and they're ready to cold cock them. It's like, well, what's this? Whoa, stop. Right? These hyperactive, reactive, impulsive, labile kids. Then there's another group of students who become aggressive and defiant because they learn over time that if they push back, they can begin to exert a little bit of control in their environment. So for them, it's, how can I control? Maybe I feel a little safer if I can control this. And they start pushing back. And I love these two groups of students. And I, I really do like working with them. Um, uh, but the other reason that I like it isn't just that I like working with them. They're standing there. They're sitting in that classroom. It's like they're raising their hand saying, hey, over here, I'm having a problem. I can't do this. They're letting us know right up front. It's the third group that I sometimes worry about, and they're here, which is the group that's learned that if I can stay off the radar, if I can stay under the radar, if I can just stay not in anyone's attention, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be safe. And when I was first a licensed psychologist, I was um, working in a, in a a K through 12, small K through 12 system, and I had my office in the high school. And I would always go to the high school first thing in the morning because they started first, then the middle school, then the elementary school. And this was a long time ago, so like the high school didn't even have rotating schedules or whatever. It was my first job out, and I was pretty excited. I had an office with a window. I didn't have to test in the cafeteria. It was pretty good stuff. And the second or third day I was there, I'm in the guidance office, and the guidance secretary introduces me to this wonderful young lady who's beginning her junior year, and we start talking, just, hi, how you doing? And you know some people you meet, you just, you hit it off right away. You can talk, you enjoy it. It's like a free flow, free, f it, it just works. Well, she and I were that way. We got along. It was fun chatting with her. And I said, hello, you know, and she, not like she was an honor student, she was an average kid in the high school, probably C plus, B minus average, just an average kid. And she would come down to see me three, four days a week. I could almost count if I was beginning the day in the high school that she was going to be there and she and I would chat. And it was enjoyable. And we did that for two years. She graduated, she left. Twelve years after she graduated, I got a letter. And I'd be lying if I didn't tell you. It took me five, ten minutes to remember who she was because, of course, I got the letter and my radar is which, you know, which um, special needs student is this? But she wasn't. And then I remembered, oh, that's, oh. And I'm reading the letter. And she was thanking me for being there for her. That her dad was physically abusing her on a regular basis. That school was her safe place. I was transitioned into school. I was, oh, I'm OK, I'm in school. Now, why me? Now, I can assure you it had nothing to do with clinical skill. And I think it's because I was young that we had that connection just for whatever reason, it was fun talking to each other, and I think she felt it like I felt it, so it was enjoyable. And I didn't live in town. So that awkward meeting in the supermarket, she and dad are buying groceries on there, and I go, oh, hi, how you doing? And he goes, who's that? Oh, that's the school psychologist I see three or four mornings a week, right? So they're here, and we don't know who they are. And we're not going to be able to find them, but the kids are here. And I, you look at all this behavior, whether it's aggressive, whether it's, it, it's sort of withdrawn under the radar, reactive, impulsive, the common thread here is the student's sense of safety. How do I keep myself safe? 